Moving on around here, trapezoid is next. <clears throat> Remember the trapezoid is the one that has the uh, one pair, one set of parallel sides. Turns out you need three measurements to get the area here. You do need the height, but you also need the length of each of the parallel sides. So uh, this side and this side That's what you need. Some books call it different things, but we'll call ours big B and little b. <coughs> well, here's where this comes from. Uh, okay. Again, making it kind of a pronounced deal. Let's make two of those trapezoids just like that, okay? And then I'm going to flip the second one. Okay, that one's supposed to be just like that one. Okay, all right. So I'm going to flip this one over again and put it right here. So I've got these two trapezoids are exactly the same. Now... It does make a parallelogram, but notice here, this is big B, this is little b, what is this? Isn't that big B again? That's the same as that, because I flipped it over. And this is little b, supposed to be. So this parallelogram is, this is the base of the parallelogram. So it's big B plus little b times the height. That's the parallelogram that those two make. So what would the trapezoid be? So the area of this whole thing is this. So the trapezoid is going to be half of that, isn't it? Because that is made up of two. So it's a half, again, like the triangle, times big B plus little b times H. Let me do one on that. <clears throat> All right, so let's do one. Let's say I've got... Trapezoid is three feet there. Um, five feet along down here, and then this is two feet here. So area-wise, what you do is you take half times, what's big B? Five plus little b, three, and then times the H on the outside, which would be two. <clears throat> so the deal is you've got to add the big B plus little b, which gives you eight times your two, um, <clears throat> and it's a matter of of uh, however, you, however you want to do it. You can do the A times 2 and then do the half. Half times 16 is 8. Now, <clears throat> my area is 8. And again, units for area, I will be checking your units because we'll do more units uh, next time. But... <clears throat> Units for area, always square units. So what's the units here? Well, I've got feet is the distance measurement, so the area would be feet squared. Units for area is always square units. Okay. All right. We'll come back to some of those formulas and those formulas you do will need to know for the test these these ones that we would like for you to know some of them are you know length times width you know triangle most of you know that one right maybe maybe not okay um, <clears throat> but these these formulas we would like you to know a couple others and that is off the circle there's a couple of formulas on the circle <clears throat>
Yeah, on a circle. Really, you need to know one measurement. That is the radius, the distance from the center to the outside. Sometimes they also give uh, the diameter. What's the diameter? Distance across through the center, right? And of course, the diameter, how is it related to the radius? There'd be two of them, right? The diameter is twice the radius, or two times r, um, or the radius is the diameter divided by two, whichever perspective you want there. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> so there's a relationship, of course, between the radius and the diameter. Okay. Now, for the circle, the distance around is not usually referred to as the perimeter. It's referred to as the circumference, yes. Uh, <clears throat> circumference, well, you can know it two different ways. The circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. Or... Notice you've got the two r, so you could say the circumference is pi times the diameter. He like said usually, usually you're given the radius of your uh, circle, so we usually this is the one we typically go with. Now, I say pi. What do I mean by pi? Usually we uh, approximate pi with 3.14, right? But that's an approximation. And the book will use that approximation. However, be aware on your calculators, if you use the pi button, somebody have your calculator and give me uh, what your calculator says for pi. It's 3.14. Okay, yeah. <laughs> the calculator keeps going. It, it does more than just 3.14 because pi is a never-ending decimal number. Um, and the calculator will use a little more exactness than just 3.14. 3.14 is just a good rounding that we... And that's the answers in the book will give you with 3.14. But I don't care. Use, uh, use your pi button on your calculator. Just be aware it will slightly vary um, your answer comparatively speaking. Now, what I'd like to show here is uh, uh, <clears throat> this. The reason, uh, well, if you focus on this one, <clears throat> it turns out that if we were to accurately measure the distance around this circle from here around to there, that's the circumference, and compare that to, you could do it to the radius or diameter, either one, if we could compare that ratio to the ratio of a bigger circle, measuring its circumference to its diameter, and then bigger circle or smaller circle, whichever you prefer, if we were to accurately measure its circumference to its diameter, turns out all these are the same ratio no matter what size. You know what the ratio is? about 3.14 pi. It is pi. doesn't matter what size or shape the circle is, the ratio of the distance around to its diameter, that's pi. And this is where this comes from. This was known however long ago, long, long time ago, that this ratio was the same. And this formula comes right out of that because if you multiply both sides by d, you get c equals pi times d, which is exactly that, and then the other comes from it. So that's, that's where that formula comes from. Now, the area of a circle
it is usually listed in terms of the radius. What's the area of a circle? Pi r squared. Pi r squared. Yep. The area of a circle is always pi times the radius squared. Mm -hmm. All right? And uh, that, too, <coughs> comes out of, uh, believe it or not, comes out of a rectangle or a scenario. You can divvy it up. <coughs> here's, here's a quick, quick rundown. If I take a circle and cut it into sectors and then rearrange those sectors like this, Not much looking like a rectangle there, but uh, let's go with it. All right, so this is this right here. Well, let's start with this one. What is that length right there? Wouldn't that be one of these, the radius? And then this would be this much, which is half of the circumference. So if the circumference is 2 pi r, then half of it would be 1 pi r, or just pi r. Okay? Like I said, that doesn't much resemble a rectangle. However, if you keep splitting this up to smaller and smaller pieces of pi, notice these get less and less curvy. And so you wind up, you know, your little pieces of pi here are a little straighter on the bottom. Whoops, not that bad this, that, that, that one, I don't know, I may have got 16 or so, but anyway, yeah, this, this gets a little straighter, this gets a little more upright, so you wind up, if you get more and more pieces of those, yeah, you wind up getting pretty straight up and down, pretty straight across, I mean, it's all divvied up, but yeah, you got pi r, rectangle by R length width pi r times r is pi r squared. Anyway, <clears throat> let me show you the problem.